All right. So we've got a lot of the head. I am not all that worried about these line distinctions because vectors are about shapes more than lines. So if I wanted like a mouth and an open tongue or a tongue sticking out or something, I can definitely do that with shapes. But for now, I'm going to do the other big shapes, which are the body and then this big triangle behind. So if I want to do a body, even though there's lines to show the edges of that shape with my sketch, what I want to do is make these shapes. And one way I can do that or try it is not starting with the basic shapes, the rectangle, the oval, the, the triangle or pentagram or whatever the shapes are, but rather going down to the bottom, what's called the custom shape tool. I make sure to show this in this video because within Photopea, much better than Photoshop, the one you pay for, Photopea has a huge library of custom shapes that are incredibly useful. And I believe, um, though I'm not a lawyer, I believe public domain for you to use because everyone has access to these, right? So you don't need to worry about copyright of these shapes. So when you click on the custom shape tool, it looks like it's a star. It's not a star. It's whatever shape you select under the shape options here at the top. And so you have just a standard kind of elementary school vector alphabet. You have some, some standard animals, including a cat. So if I chose the cat, you know, I might be able to use a body and manipulate it from there. You've got lots and lots of infographic images for visual communication, especially arrows and like social media logos that they make available and product logos, and then all the Creative Commons ones that we're going to be learning about for question today, too. Remember, we're reading chapter two, which is about these. And on and on and on. There's just a ton of these. These are all vectors, all there for you to use. They even have emojis, right? Which is why I don't show this too early. So I want you to learn how to manipulate these shapes. So lots and lots of options. My God. They keep going and they keep adding them. I really love the cloud one. That's a great one. So I'm actually going to use the cloud one to start. And then I just draw it and it gives me a complex shape to start with. And I just like whether it's a circle or anything else, I can use it to choose a color. And then I can transform it just like any other kind of shape. And I can warp it. I can also distort it, skew it, bend it up and down, and then layer it with other shapes until it gives me what I want. Right. So this is maybe an option to use for the belly because it can be hard to just get all of these different curves with such clean distinction between them from warping a single oval. That would take a lot of patience and a lot of different multiple tries at warping. But this way, I can kind of overlap it with where I want and get it right in there. Okay, now let's try that custom shape for the cat. Bring that in. It's not as interesting as I want it to be, but it's a place to start, right? And then what I can do is free transform it. And warp it and kind of push and pull it where I need it. So I'll push this behind my cat's head, obviously. I kind of like the idea of a gap for a collar. So maybe that's something I can make use of, maybe not. There. But then I don't like the tail that it leaves me with. And so some of these custom shapes might be a little bit too complex and not worth it, right? But I want you to know that they are there because they give you a lot of variety. So for instance, this is now what I have. <laughs> But yeah, that one's probably not worth it. So then it's back to just using simple shapes that I can understand. 
I'm going to use a rectangle. I'm going to start it up here. I'm just going to have it go pretty much straight down. And then warp it. Option Command T to get to free transform. Right click inside for warping. Stretch it there. Stretch it here. Stretch it out. Stretch it out. Yep. I'll move it underneath my sketch. And then I'm going to Option Command T for transform again. And this time, hold down Option and Shift and squeeze it on both sides just to. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to distort and just pull it wider at the bottom. So warp sometimes makes everything a little too loosey-goosey, and that's where skew and distort can be really helpful. And then I can go back in and warp just for little touch-ups to match my curves. If I'm really trying to match my sketch. Remember, you don't need to. So now what do I have? I've got the neck and the back of my cat. My little emoticon cat. Now I need paws and I need, you know, the back foot and these front feet. And so I'm just going to use good old fashioned ellipses. I'll do them first on top of my sketch so I can see them even more clearly. I'm going to rotate them right away just a little bit. And then I'm going to go right to edit, free transform. Oops made an extra layer. Sometimes I try to move it, and when you move it, when you're still on the shape tool and not the move tool, then it creates a new shape. And that's annoying. So you want to be on the move tool to move it. So we're really only using the shape tools and the move tool, and then we're doing a lot of edit free transform for this project, and then moving layers up and down. This time I'm going to play with distort instead of warp. And I'm just going to kind of push and pull it from the edges. And then, once it's a little asymmetrical, then I can go to the warp and turn it into a paw. Kind of like a little flipper. Now I'm going to move that under my sketch. See how that works together as a shape. That looks pretty good, pretty clean. Those changes in angles. And now I'm just going to duplicate it and maybe not follow my sketch this time. It's all about the shape. And then I'm going to Option Command T, flip it horizontally like I did with the eyes. Instead of having it like this, which makes it look like a seal, I might make it a little bit smaller. Or just come out at a slightly different angle. Hold down shift maybe. Then I can warp to just get it into the shape I want. All right, now the back foot. Same thing, going to take that shape, going to duplicate it, Command J, Option Command T. This time make it a lot bigger. And I'm going to shrink it down, hit return, Option Command T, it squares up my transform box. So I can hold down Shift and just squish it a little and maybe rotate it. So I think about there. All right. Yeah, so those shapes look pretty good. It's pretty different than my sketch, right? But this sketch might remind me of some things. Actually, it's not that different than my sketch, but I just changed the silhouette a little bit. Now what I want to do is put some toes, little toe beans on the bottom of that foot. And I'm just going to steal for myself again, Command J. And then with the Move tool, move these little pads to the foot. 
Now the problem is it's behind the toe right or the foot right now, so I'm going to use command right bracket to move that layer up, up above. And then command J, duplicate it. Option command T to shrink it with free transform. Maybe make it an oval. Maybe tilt it. Okay, and then I'm going to duplicate it again, and then do the whole thing again. Option Command T on the duplicate. This time, stretch it bigger. Squish it down. And warp it. Right click, side, make it a little lopsided. Right, and then I see if all those shapes, which are all white, kind of layer to give, to give me the underside of the foot that I want. And then I'm going to do little claws. How can I do that? I'm going to steal this little black eye, duplicate it, move it down, command right bracket to move it up on top. Then how do I pinch that into a claw? Do I really even need to? Yeah, I will. I'm going to free transform it. Option command T, go inside it, warp. It's just the fastest way to squish it. And just turn it into a more complex organic shape. Duplicate that, Command J, move it down. I'll just do two, two claws. Uh, I guess I need three. But each time I'm going to change it a little bit, otherwise it looks too copy pasty. So I'm just going to scale them down a little each time. And then with the move tool, you can also use your arrow keys if you need to. All right now, I have this complex shape that's nice. I'm going to duplicate that. Option Command T. This might become the white belly of my cat. Again, lots of repetition in these shaped graphics. Especially because my cat isn't yellow. My cat is a tuxedo cat, black and white. I might take that shape again, duplicate it, and then Option Command T, and use it on the cheeks. Make it a little bit bigger. Again, lots of repetition in flat graphics. And we, we want to get this submitted in about 10 minutes. So it looks like it's going to be a little lumpy, and that's OK. And if I feel that's too lumpy, I can always delete it and just use Instead of the complex warp shape, I could always just work from a very simple ellipse and then warp it from there, which will give me a cleaner look. So flat graphics are often about being as clean as possible. That's why we're using the shape tools so much. We're not trying to do everything with, with a pen or drawing. We're getting used to these transform commands and all of their peculiarities. Getting used to skew and distort. And then warp when we need to really customize the shape and make it different. But yeah, that's a, a cleaner cheek. Now if I duplicate that, Command J, Option Command T, flip it horizontal. This is a good start for the other side, right? And this time, I'm just going to use Command Left Bracket to move it down through the layers until it's underneath the nose. And then it kind of shows me, well, I just want this nose to be in a different place. And maybe tilted. So I know we do warp a lot, but don't forget, you also just have standard rotate and scale. That's very helpful. 